Right. Hey everybody, I'm Jared, the owner of Limestone Legends Billiards here in downtown Athens on the square. This is my friend Brad. We're going to do a little informational video for you guys today. That was Brad's idea. And I'm going to let him share a little bit about why he wanted to do this and what the reason is. So most of my life I've had a love of like sports. But with a mobility impairment, sports have been a challenge to find things that I can get involved with. Um, at 16, I tried out for a wheelchair basketball team down in Birmingham, um, but there were obstacles in that with travel and the fact that I was still in high school. Um, I've tried out for uh, wheelchair tennis, was never very good at that. So when I met Jared and uh, found out that he was opening a uh, pool heart hall here in town, I uh, decided to try it out. Um, I played uh, for a little while and then I uh, had an APA um, league start. Uh, I joined that and I've been playing for about a year now and I thought th this video would be a good idea to promote um, the sport of pool for wheel wheelchair users um, just to get, get them more, more in involved and active. And I wanted to get, to get Jared a chance to uh, play from a chair so he could see how, how much difference it, it is playing standing up versus playing from a chair. Yeah, so I have never sat in a wheelchair besides leaving surgeries. So this is going to be a completely new learning experience for me. And I'm going to ask Brad for advice along the way, just so that people that are used to shoot standing can see the difficulties that, you know, that we may not notice in the adjustment that it's going to take. And we, me and Brad have been talking before this video, and we think there's going to be a couple. I think I'm, this is going to be a big challenge. So Brad is an APA 3. He's about to be an APA 4 probably at the end of this session. Um, after my first session at APA, I was a 7. Um, so we're not professional players. There's going to be a lot of mistakes anyway. This is just a completely, for like an informational standpoint, um, to try to get a sport that, you know, chair players can play and enjoy. That it's very accessible to almost everybody, you know, realistically. Every, almost every city has a pool hall that you can come and play. And it's a very good community to get into. What we're going to start out with first, we'll give you guys like a little uh, play out of what we're going to do. So first we're going to play a game of nine ball, me standing right in a chair. Um, then next, I'm going to get in the chair and we're going to play a game of nine ball and a game of eight ball. Um, during that, what we're going to do is we're going to have some informational questions that I'm going to have to ask Brad for like certain situations like what he would do um, because I'm going to have no idea, you know, I'll have no idea whatsoever what's going on. So. And we're just trying to raise awareness for a chair player. You know? It's something that if you don't really have a sport, you don't really know what you want to get into, um, you can ask Brad Pool. It's almost the perfect game slash sport to get into. Um, there's tournaments in Las Vegas that Brad's looked into, the ATA tournament. Uh, you get funding for that. If you qualify, you get funding, so you get a free trip to Las Vegas basically just to play. Um, and we're, we're going to try to get Brad into that this coming year. Yeah. So now we're going to swap. I'm going to get in the chair. Um, Brad's going to do the break on nine ball. Um, we're going to try this. I have never played pool in a wheelchair before, so this should be a very good learning experience for everybody. <laughs> good. All right, guys. So uh, Brad had another little suggestion about from standing the sitting on weight of your brick stick. So I use a carbon fiber move sheet that's about 18 ounces. I prefer a lighter stick, which should put more ball speed technically on the ball when it leaves. Um, whereas a heavy stick, you don't have to swing near as hard, but the weight should transfer through the stick and give you a bigger break. So for this break, we're gonna let Brad break the first game of nine ball. Um, after this little intro set here, I'm gonna get in the chair while Brad's breaking. And then from there, we're gonna play a game of nine ball with me in a chair. Then the next game of eight ball, I'm gonna break using Brad's heavy stick to see if there's a difference in breaking technique from sitting in a lighter stick or a heavy stick. So uh, I'm gonna let Brad get to the table and break this game of nine ball up. And I'm gonna go in, uh, never playing in a chair before, and I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of questions for Brad. So and we're excited to get this going. All right, let's do it. It just slides over you the tip of your cue. Um, it's made by, the, by a company called uh, Shifty Bridge. Um, you can get them on Amazon for about $12. All right, and what this does, 
is it helps with your longer shots, excuse me. <laughs> it helps with your longer shots so you can get a So from what I've just witnessed breaking with Brad's 25 ounce stick, um, it seems a lot easier to break with a heavier stick sitting because you don't have to put as much force behind it. So I think that does help out a lot. Right, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a good little point. I have a, I broke with a, several of my teammates' uh, break stick that were heavier um, before I bought the one that I have now. And um, it seemed to work a lot better. Awesome, so we're gonna get in this game of uh, eight ball here. And I'm probably going to be asking Brad a lot of questions during this game in particular. Nine ball is kind of a straightforward game, but with eight ball, there's a lot more intricate defenses and different shots that are going to come up that probably didn't come up during the nine ball game. So we'll probably be talking a little bit more during this game. Right. I didn't use a jump cue the entire time because I felt like necessarily that I didn't have an opportunity to really with the shots that I was left. So that may be something else, you know, that we didn't really go into in the video, but something to think about. Um, then another thing is the maneuvering around the table. Like, I didn't realize how that was probably more of a challenge for me than some of the shots that I shot were. It was literally just trying to move around and get my body situated on the shots for the table, and I didn't really realize that in the video. And I feel like a lot of people don't really think about that either. So 
I'm gonna give it back to Brad. Um, I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about his process of joining the ATA and what he has to say about, you know, wheelchair players to see, you know, where maybe it could be a future player. First of all, I want to say I thought you did a really, really good job. Thank you. you know, um, but for anybody out there that's uh, a wheelchair user and you're looking for a sport to get involved with, check, check out the North Alabama APA Association. Uh, you can find, find us on Facebook, um, reach out to them, find a, a division that you can enjoy. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you meet a lot of great people. I play in here at Montreal Legends is basically like a family. I mean, they uh, they do charity events whenever uh, members' families um, have emergencies uh, occur. They they host uh, charity tournaments and uh, raffles and different things like that. Um, and as Jared stated at the beginning of the video, there's also a chance to play in Vegas. Uh, I plan to go next next summer for the wheelchair championships. Currently, there's only about, about 55 players that played uh, this, this past time, um, and I, I would really like to see that that increase. Um, I, I intend to reach out to the North, North Alabama Spot Method Association, and there's a new organization in town, like City Adaptive Athletics, that I want to reach out to and see if we can we can grow this and have a, have an actual wheelchair division here in North Alabama. That'd be really cool. And another thing too that I was going to talk about is the APA. It's not just in Alabama. This is actually United States League. Right, exactly. So almost any city, any town that you are in the United States, if this video finds you and you're a chair player, you're, just say you're in a chair, you don't have any like hobbies or anything you want to do. Maybe you just have to or you don't know that maybe the sport's available to you or how accessible it actually is. And the pool community, we're a tight knit community. And everybody's willing to help. All the way, there's professional players that reach out to amateur players all the time on forums online. Um, I've, I've got a couple of friends that are higher players. Uh, Florian Kohler, we actually met him, and he came down. Brad got to go to that show. Yeah, um, we actually got Florian to come to Athens to do a trick shot uh, exhibition with us, um, and that was through the APA. He's an APA owner in Las Vegas, so um, you may get to, you know you may get the chance to meet Florian if you go out for the APA event. So that's another thing you never know. So, uh, and it's, it's not just a 20, 21 and up um, organization. I mean, they, they have youth divisions as well, so all ages can. Yeah, uh, and, the, and the division is handicapped as well, so no matter what your skill level is, you could be a complete amateur, never have a pool stick, and it can still be fun because of the way the handicapping system works. It makes it competitive for everybody. Uh, and it, even if, you, if you've never played before, the higher skill level players on your team, they coach, they're they allowed to coach you during, during your match, and you're, you're gonna get better. I was awful when I started, and you know, I'm still not you know, pro, but I've, I've, been, I've improved greatly. Yeah, so Brad's only year. been playing for about a year here now, and just in that year, coming up in November, it'll be a year that he's been playing pool, and just in the one year that he's played, he's probably about to be an APA four, just after a year, and he's never even touched a pool cue before, really. Right. So that's a big improvement. So, you know, it's one of those things, it's a sport that anybody can do. Um, you, Brad can attest, it takes a lot of time to practice and asking questions, no matter what level you're at, you're always, this game is always teaching you something, you're always learning from this game. So, but, uh, any closing statements or? All right, yeah, we're good. Um, we appreciate Elijah. I'm gonna give him a shout out. He's gonna put his watermark and some stuff in this video. Um, he donated his time to do this video for us and for you guys, hopefully, to see this video. Um, Brad and I hope it does some good, you know, get some conversation started. Um, maybe even boost the chair players in the, that's gonna be here this summer um, in the APA Las Vegas tournament. Exactly. So we appreciate you guys checking in. Again, we appreciate Elijah for doing this video for us. Um, once he gets it edited, we're gonna get it out and we hope it does some good, man. Thank you guys.